we have seen a general procedure to solve the wave equation. But how does this look like in an explicit example? And how does the final picture look like? Is it much different from the heat equation? That is what we will see in this video. So first of all, we have our PDE, UTT equals C squared times UX, UXX. We have boundary conditions. We use uh, uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions fixing uh, the string on both ends. And in this particular case, uh, we have a seemingly complicated initial condition for the displacement and zero initial velocity. That's uh, I say seemingly, because what you basically have is just two linear functions which agree at L over 3. So basically, you pluck the, sling, the string at uh, position L over 3 by some triangle. We will see this later in the, in, in the picture. Uh, we'll only need this initial condition here much later. We we'll first start uh, with solving our wave equation using separation of variables. As usually, usual, you have un equals x of x times t of t. Uh, we uh, plug, uh, plug this in. You get uh, uh, xxx equals minus lambda times x. Zero at both endpoints means you get the, the sines and eigenvalue n pi over lambda squared. So that's in the previous video. This is the same as the e equation. And now something different happens. You get a different equation for uh, the, the t of t. You get a second derivative of t with respect to time equals minus some positive constant times t. So this gives us as solutions cosines and sines for t as function of t. And our total solution then becomes this t of t times the sine n pi x over l. And then we sum n from 1 to infinity. And we still need to determine the a n and the b n. That's the main point of this video. Um, so for the bn, it's actually easy. We differentiate with respect to uh, time uh, and plug in uh, uh, t equals zero. We get this expression over here. But our initial condition says this is zero. So that means that our bn are zero. For the an, we just plug in time zero. We get our fx, which is specified over there. And uh, this uh, is the sum over a n sine n by x over l. So that means that we will have to write our f of x as a sum of sines. But we know how to do this. This means that we need uh, a Fourier series of f of x. So what do we do? We only want sines, so we first make the old extension of f. And then we know this old extension only has sines, and its coefficients are 1 over l integral minus l to l, f odd times sine n by x over l. Now we know this odd extension is odd, the sine is odd, so the product is even. So we can rewrite this integral as 2 over l and just integrate from 0 to l over f odd sine n by x over l dx. And then we use that between 0 and l, the odd extension and f are the same. So this is in fact just the same as 2 over l integrate from 0 to l, l of x and sine n by x over l. So our coefficients uh, a n are given by this seemingly nasty integral. So let's summarize uh, and then we compute the a n. So our final solution is given over here. The initial condition was given over here and the a n are given by this integral. Now the, uh, we have a split uh, uh, prescription for f. It's different between 0 and l over 3 and l over 3 and l. So when we integrate we integrate from L, 0 to L over 3, we integrate from L over 3 till L, a different function. For both, we have to use integration by parts. First integral first, integrate a sine and pi x over L, gives us a minus cosine and pi x over L times uh, L over n pi times this 3x over L, which stays there. And uh, then using integration by parts, so minus this cosine times the derivative of 3x over l, so times 3 over l. So that gives us 3 over l times l over n pi, so 3 over n pi. Then same trick for the other term. So we integrate the sine again, gives us a cosine n pi x over l times minus l over n pi, times this 3l minus 3x over 2l between the boundary points, minus this cosine, 
times the derivative of 3L minus 3X over 2L, which is minus 3 over 2L, which gives us a minus 3 over 2M pi. So there we are. And now we just have to do one more integration and plug in some boundary values. So the uh, boundary values of this one, so the lower boundary gives us a zero due to the x over there. And the upper boundary gives the, the three x over l becomes one. So we just have a minus l over n pi times cosine n pi over three. Then we have to integrate the cosine again, which gives us a sine times l over n pi. So that's, that's this term plus the boundary points over here. The boundary at l gives us zero and the boundary at l over three gives us a one. So we are left with a plus l over n pi times the cosine and a minus. We have to integrate this part again, which gives us a sine times l over n pi, which gives us this part. And then we see that these two cancel out, which is nice. And the other ones gives us give us only sines over uh, sine of n pi over 3. And if you combine them, you get this expression for your a n. So then we have everything. We have our a n and we have our u. And now, of course, we like to plot something. So if we want to plot, we have to choose some L. So I've chosen for the figure L equals 1. And I took some different times, t equals 0, pi over 3c, 2 pi over 3c, and pi over c. And then we get the following plots. So initially, we are over there. So we plug the string. And then we see what happens to our solution. Uh, we get a wave stays put here and there, of course. At equals pi over 3c and then 2 pi over 3c and pi over c we are over there so mirrored and then it moves back back and forth back and forth so the uh, the wave in the string moves back and forth all the time so you see although the procedure might be very similar to what we did in the heat equation like the result is completely different and it should be because in this wave equation we have no dissipation of energy or something so it, may, it goes up and down all the time because no energy is dissipated. It's not like the heat equation where all uh, disturbances were smoothed out. So yes, you can use the same procedure. However, as you saw already in this example, uh, the, the results are really uh, 